Hello everybody and welcome to another video. So we're going to continue where we left off with the Bretonian main army and we're going to jump into this overview of uh, the faction and look at the Arcane Journal, which is kind of like an additional add-ons rules, but we're going to go with that in, in a, a little second. Um, if you could, please subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get to three and a half thousand subscribers this year. We're well on track for that and it's going really, really well, but it would be amazing if I could get a few more of my non-subscriber viewers to hit that button, ring that bell, and also like my video content. So if you do like it and are enjoying it, please hit the button. And without that anymore waffling, let's jump into the video and look at the Arcane Journal for the Kingdoms of Britannia. Okay, so the Arcane Journals, the way that these work is it gives your army additional rules and two, I believe, two um, different ways of building your army to a sort of a set theme. So in the Bretonians book, we have um, Bretonian Exiles and we also have the Crusader Army list. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the Bretonian um, exiles list have a look at how that army has been made and then we'll see and we'll have a look at how the bretonian crusaders are made and then we've got some um some sort of character units so like the green knights and named characters as well as some interesting new units that can be made and used alongside these army lists in this book um, and we also have some like magic items and stuff like that these books are really, really cool. And one of the things that I really do like about them is they kind of give the the player um, additional options. So they're not compulsory and you can kind of really theme them around. So like the Exiles are more like the Border Princes uh, and the Crusaders are basically, if you want to go knight heavy, this is like the list for you. You, you literally go a lot of mounted units. Um, but there's also some really cool modeling and hobby type units um sort of like the brigad the brigadins or the brigands um and the bombards and stuff like that and the the yeoman guard are really cool units that you can use on the ground um and like use different kits and stuff to kit bash them but we'll cover all that more when we get to them but first let's check out the bretonian exiles army composition okay so the bretonian exiles are an interesting list so um for your characters you can have up to 50 percent of your army value made up of these you can have one baron per thousand points zero to one damsel uh, and then you can have any number of paladins outcast wizards and sergeant at arms um for your core you can have 25 percent of your army points um can be must be spent on this so you have to have plus one unit of knights of the realm on foot or mounted knights of the realm plus one unit of yeoman guard or peasant bowmen zero to one unit of knight errant per thousand points and men at arms and mounted yeoman can be taken as many as you want you can have 33 percent of your army can be special and this is made up of squires and pegasus knights and zero to one units of battle pilgrims per a thousand points for your rare which is 33 percent of your army can be questing knights and border prince brigand brigadins and zero to one field trebuchets for a thousand points and a zero to one print border prince bombards per thousand points obviously you can have 25 percent of your army can be made up of mercenaries and your army can have a battle standard for a paladin um, at no additional cost and you can have magic items from the kingdoms of Bretonia list now just to point out that you are going to need the realm the fantasy uh, the realms of fantasy book so the main good guy army book to run this book alongside your army it kind of uses the main um, units out of that and gives you so just additional units and options in this the Bretonian exiles have a number of special rules the first of these rules is banished lords. Barons and paladins within a Bretonian exiles army cannot have the Grail vow. However, the following characters and units may replace their knight's vow with the exiles vow for free. And this includes barons and paladins, knights of the realm on foot, knights errant, mounted knights of the realm, and pegasus knights. 
The next rule is Exile's Vow. Exile's Vow is a chivalrous vow as described in 180 of the Forces of Fantasy. Uh, a single model with a chivalrous vow has the stubborn and veteran special rules. In addition, a model with a chivalrous vow does not have to take panic tests when friendly units with either the levies or peasant special rule is destroyed, is destroyed whilst within six inches of it or when it is fled through a unit. So just like the ninth vows in the in the main sort of army list, you don't really care about peasants and you gain stubborn and veteran, which is pretty solid. And finally, reclaimed glory. A Bretonian exiles army cannot pray for the blessing of the lady at the beginning of the game. However, a unit with a blessing of the lady special rule make an overrun move or make contact with a fleeing enemy unit during a charge or pursuing move that unit will immediately gain the benefits of blessing of the lady special rule as if it had prayed at the start of the game in addition should a character with the blessings of the lady special rule kill an enemy character in a challenge they and the unit they have joined will immediately gain the benefits of the uh, blessing of the lady however should the benefit of the blessing of the lady rule be lost during the game they cannot regain it in any way so you don't get to pray and you don't get your ward save but there are ways for your bretonian princes to basically get it the next army list is the errant crusader list now, this is the all knights list this is your crusader knights type list you know your knights templar knights hospital type theme list this is where you want to go full mounted is kind of your thing so the army of infamy composition list is made up as the following so characters uh can be made up of 50 percent and it means zero to one duke zero to one baron or prophetess per thousand points one plus paladin so you have to take a paladin um, and any number of damsels and sergeant at arms for core 33% of your army uh, can be made up of this, and it's pl one plus units of knights errant per thousand points. Zero to one units of battle pilgrims may be taken as a core choice. And knights of the realm on foot, squires and mounted knights of the realm, you can take as many of these as you have points for them. Special is 50% of your army list. Men at arms, peasant bowmen, battle pilgrims, questing knights and pegasus knights. And for rare is 33%, and this is includes Grail Knights and Mounted Yeomen and 0 to 1 Field Trebuchets. And you can also take 25% of your army can be mercenaries. Now, again, just like the others, a battle standard can be taken on a paladin, and the upgrade for the battle standard costs no additional points. And you can also take magic items from the main army list in the main sort of good guy book. The Errant's Crusader list has a number of special rules. For the first of these is Crusading Knights. So when an Errant Crusade army, the following characters and units gain Crusader Zeal special rule. In addition, any of the following characters or units that have Knight Vows may replace those with the Crusader's Vow for free. So the following units are Barons, Paladins, Knights of the Realm on Foot, Battle Pilgrims, Knights Errant, Mounted Knights of the Realm, Questing Knights, Grail Knights, Pegasus Knights, and Mounted Yeomanry. And Crusader Zeal, a unit with this special rule, increases its maximum possible charge range by one inch, and when it makes a charge roll, may apply a plus one modifier to the result. In addition, a unit with this special rule gains the Impetuous special rule. Next up, we have the Crusader's Vow, which is basically the same as the other vows. You ignore peasants and everything else. The unit gains a the veteran special rule, and in addition, uh, they it does not have to pick any panic tests or anything like that when it comes to peasants being around them, um, which is pretty good. Uh, they're pretty interesting, but that's not all. There is one other rule, and that is earn your spurs so an enemy standard captured by a unit of knights errant is worth 100 victory points as a trophy of war and in addition whilst within six inches of a friendly model with the grail vow 
or any Lord of Bretonia, a unit of Knights Errant may re-roll any of the hit rolls of a natural one. So that is pretty cool. Um, gaining additional points for capturing banners by making sure that your Knights Errant are the ones to get it is a really surefire way of getting a winning formula, especially when you look at the actual bonuses to charge and the actual range to charging as well. So that's being eligible to charge 13 inches away rather than 12. All right, so the first character that we have in this book is the Green Knight. He is heavy cavalry named character, comes in at 275 points on a 30 by 60 mil base. He has a whopping weapon skill seven and he's strength and toughness four with four wounds and four attacks and a leadership of nine. Um, he has his magical blades, his Dolorous blades, and obviously he has his special shadow seed. Um, he's got some pretty cool rules in regards to how and how you get him on. But one of the main things is he has the aura of the fray. So when the green light loses his last wound and is removed from play, but is not he is not slain, uh, and then in your next controlling um, turn, you can sort of summoning back. But if you do so, he has a minus one modifier to the di dice roll when attempting it. And when you get him back, he loses a wound. So you can continually keep bringing him back throughout the game. But bear in mind, most games are going to be like five to six turns. So maybe you're not really going to get as many of these as you would like. So the Green Knight does have a number of other additional rules, such as Blessed Knight, where he has a 5 up ward against any wounds suffered. He is also ethereal, so remember he can only be attacked by magical attacks. And then he's got Guardians of the Sacred Rite. So this is basically how you summon this model in. So in your... Um, so it can't be placed during deployment. So during your start of your turn sub-phases, you roll a d6, and on a 1 and 2, he continues to slumber. On a 3 plus, the green light awakens, and if the green light has not been awakened at the start of the round 5, he automatically turns up, which is kind of cool. So when the green light is awakened, you must place him completely within a natural terrain feature anywhere on the battlefield. For the purpose of this rule, a natural terrain feature includes any woods or any difficult or dangerous terrain. Um, it does not include any construction such as walls or buildings. So if you're going to bring him, make sure you've got a couple of bits of terrain like that on your battlefield or you're not going to get him in. In addition, rather than moving normally during the remaining move sub-phases, if the green knight is completely within the natural terrain feature and not engaged in enemy combat, he may be removed from play and replace him um, so that he is completely within a different natural terrain feature. So he can kind of teleport around or he can move as normal, um, basically. And then he has his blades, which have a dual profile. So basically, one is rapid strikes, which gives you D6 extra attacks. So think of this as your sort of unit clearer. And then he has deadly blows, which is strength plus two, uh, minus one AP, and armor being one, and does multiple wounds of two so you've got one for clearing out units and you've got one for fighting sort of characters and single model um monsters and things so all in all for 275 points is pretty cool and that's some pretty cool rules so next up is sir cecil gaston the worm slayer this is a character for the um he's a baron who's a character for the sort of poster boys of the Bretonian army, that black and red colour scheme that you see in all of the um, the sort of army shot studio paint jobs. Um, he is a single model on foot, 25 by 25 mil base. He costs 165 points. He's got a weapon skill of 7, um, a toughness of and strength of 4, 3 wounds, initiative 5, 4 attacks, which is pretty decent. Um, he's got his own uh, set of equipment. He's got Sorrow's End, which is his sword. He's got a dragon hide cloak, and he has heavy armor and a shield. He also has Blessing of the Lady, Rallying Cry, and the Worm Slayer, the Exile's Vow. So the first special rule that he has is the Worm Slayer. So should Sir Cecil Gaston kill an enemy model whose troop type is Monstrous Infantry, or Monstrous Cavalry, or Monstrous Creature, or Bairnoth during a combat phase, he gains the terror special rule for the remainder of the game. 
That's really, really cool. Uh, he has a dragon hide cloak, so the armor penetration characteristic of any non magical weapons that attack Sir Cecil is reduced by two. In addition, Sir Cecil is immune to the killing blow and multiple wounds, X special rule. And if he suffers an unsaved wound from an attack with either of these special rules, he, he loses a single wound. Uh, and finally, he has a three up ward save against any wounds suffered that were caused by attacks with the flaming attack special rule. So he's pretty solid in combat. Uh, and he's he's pretty much got most bases covered. And his sword is a close uh, single-handed sword, plus one strength, minus one AP. It has monstrous uh, magical attacks, monster slayer, so he's going to kill out monsters outright, and multiple wounds too. So he's not a slouch and pretty decent. It's just a shame that he is probably going to be represented by that weird miniature with a weird face that was on foot from the games day 2009 i believe it was from next up we have lady elise the dutchard she is basically the really awesome looking um damsel on a unicorn miniature this one is really really nice so she comes in at 225 points she's monstrous cavalry she's a named character 40 by 60 mil base uh, she has a hand weapon, Chalice of Breton, and a Staff of the Elements. Um, she has She's a level 3 wizard, and she knows spells from the lore of Elementalism. And she has quite a lot of special rules, to be fair. She has Arcane Backlash, Armor Bane 2, uh, Arandius um, only, so her horse does Armor Bane hits. She has Armored Hide 1, uh, Aura of the Lady, Beguiling Aura... Blessing of the Lady, Counter Charge, Lore of the Lady, Magical Attacks, Magical Resistance minus two, Shield of the Lady, Stomp Attacks one, and Swish Ride. So she's got quite a lot of rules uh, on this one model alone. So the or the Arcane Backlash special rule um, may apply a plus one modifier to any of her dispel rolls. And in addition, should the roll uh, any natural double when making it a special dispel roll, not including the rolls of a natural double one, the spell is unbound and the casting wizard immediately loses a single wound. Now that's really nice. That's really, really nice. So the challenge of Breton, whilst this model has command range, enemy uh, characters that attempt to use any special rule or magic attacks that require them to make a leadership test, rallying cry or example, suffers a minus two modifier to, to their leadership characteristic. The staff of the elements, if you wish, Lady Elise may discard two of her randomly generated spells rather than the, the usual one, and instead select two signature spells from the lore of elementalism or the lore of the lady. So pretty powerful, and for 225 points, not only is it an absolute amazing looking miniature, but she's pretty solid as well. And obviously, she can be taken in a Kingdoms of Bretonian army using any of the composition lists um, that includes this option. So she must be fielded as present below. Next up, we have the Outcast Wizards that come in at 45 points. They are um, infantry models on a 25 by 25 inch base. And they start at a level 1 wizard. You can upgrade these to a level 3. And they can have up to 75 points of magic items. They can also have... Um, they also have magical attacks. Magical resistance minus 1. And untutored arcanist. So the untutored arcanist rule is... When required to roll on the miscast table... A wizard with a special rule must roll or an extra d6... And discard the highest result, which is quite good. They can also be given a war horse as well, which is basically your standard war horse from the main army list. And they can pick their spells from battle magic, demonology, dark magic, elementalism, illusion, and necromancy. Pretty solid and a nice non sort of um, standard Bretonia type wizard, kind of a bit more of an empire feel to it, which is kind of cool. Next up, we have the Yeoman Guard. Basically, these are five points per model, weapon skill three, ballistic skill three, um, peasants. 
they essentially follow all of the basic rules for the peasants. Um, they've got a couple of additional options such as halberds and thrusting spears. Um, and they have the same rules. But the biggest thing to remember is that these are like a little bit slightly better than your normal bog standard peasant. And they're obviously sort of limited to the two army lists that are, um, well, mainly the army list for the exiles. So like so your border prince army. They're, they're, again, they're your normal chaff. There are some sort of uh, little designer notes at the bottom about painting them up with a little bit more unified colours rather than peasant um, rag type colours. Um, to sort And the men at arms miniatures are perfect to represent these guys. Okay, now for one of the probably the coolest units in this entire book, and that's the Border Prince Brigands. They are four points a model. Um, they're regular infantry with a minimum size of 10. Um, they come with hand weapons and light armor, and you can give them additional hand weapons or shields. They can also have pistols, plunder buses, and crossbows. They can have a full command, and the Desperado, their unit champion, can have up to 50 points of magical items. Uh, zero to one units per thousand points. Um, may replace the um, the open order for close order or open order for skirmishes. And a unit with the skirmishes may take um, ambushes or the scout special rule. So they have horde, impetuous, levies, motley crew, open order and warband. And obviously the blunderbuss, which is a um, range of 12, strength 3, minus 1 AP, multi-shot D3 and volley fire. Now, why I like these so much is they kind of remind me of the Mountains Brigands from Game of Thrones, like his little band of cutthroat assholes. Um, and this is really, really cool. And plus, the modeling sort of little tips in the bottom of the page kind of sort of give you a, a rough idea of how to make these, of using the Empire Militia Kit and the Men at Arms Kit and kind of kit bashing your brigands. Um, for me, this is really awesome, and, and I really want to do a Border Prince army just for this one unit. Um, so yeah, really, really cool. Massive thumbs up for this. So good. Now for the final unit of the book, and that's the Border Prince Bombard. This is a 100-point model for a war machine on a 50 by 50 mil base. Um, the crew have hand weapons and light armor, levies and the skirmisher rules. So the Bombard rules are as follows. It has a 40 inch um, range at strength eight minus three, armor being two, cannon fire, cumbersome, move or shoot, multiple wounds, D3 plus one. And then it has its misfire table. Now, just to bear in mind that Bretonians don't have cannons. So they kind of give you a hint at what to do, uh, either using any of the war machines from both the Empire or Dwarf cannons, are ideal for basically representing the the border prince bombard um so as you can kind of see that the 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 border prince army kind of has like a little bit of an um a sort of empire sort of influence and you can sort of bring some of those units in to your army which is so cool and uh, yeah absolutely all the way for this and i can't wait to start my border prince army Okay, so finally we have some magic items. So there are a number of magic items throughout this book, this little mini book that adds to the main ones in the core faction um, list. So you've got things like the Crusader's Lance for 60 points. Um, that is basically a combat lance that is strength user plus two, minus two AP, armor being furious charge, hatred all enemies, and magical attacks. Now bearing in mind, that only a model from the Errant's Crusade army may take this magic item. So you kind of get that sort of vibe that certain armies um, from out of the two army lists will have access to certain um, magical items, which is kind of cool. There are quite a lot. There's what? One, two, three, four, four like weapons. There's like two armors, a couple of talismans and some magic standards. And the magic standards, again, they kind of follow the same thing that 
they're only really available to certain armies but all in all they're pretty cool and uh, yeah mixing it in with some of the main ones from the main list you're gonna get some really nice strong combinations um so yeah really interested to see what our people's army lists start to look like with these i'm very much definitely going to be looking at doing a border prince army with the praetorian exiles army so that is this uh, additional book the arcane journal for the kingdoms of Britannia. i really love these books and i can't wait to see what the other seven factions will get when they get there especially like so the orcs and goblins the high elves the warriors of chaos just to name a few i think this is a really really cool idea and i like the fact that they're not compulsory they're kind of just additional fun different ways of playing and collecting your chosen army and it's something that i would like maybe games workshop to look at doing for maybe likes of the horus heresy um an arcane journal for the individual legions would be really really cool but let me know in the comments what you think of the arcane journal i personally really really like it can't wait to get started and if you like my content please like share and comment and ring that bell but most importantly please subscribe to that the the channel and help me hit my goal of 3500 subscribers by the end of the year thank you very much and i will catch you all in the next video everybody goodbye for now